Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain For You. Um, today what I want to do is try to make this whole chronic pain and chronic symptoms thing as simple to understand as possible. Now I'm going to give you kind of my take. It's not a scientific thing, it's not proven by science, but it's just a real nice and simple way to look at the pain and symptoms and really understand the interplay between the mind and the body and the uh, emotions and the body. So, Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you don't know who he is, look him up on YouTube. Brilliant guy. He's done a lot of great things in the in the mind-body world. He healed himself of crippling, you know, back injuries, got run, run into by a truck and anyway, you can look him up and, and see his story. A lot of people know who he is. But what he says is the the body is the subconscious mind. And he'll explain it a lot better than I can. But essentially, um, our emotions are felt in the body, right? And here's some examples. You know, when this happened, felt like a kick in the gut. You ever hear anybody say, you make me sick, right? You're so angry, it feels like you're going to get sick. How about, I'm so angry my head's going to explode. Well, headache, right? I'm all choked up. I've got a heavy heart, right? All of these emotional statements are absolutely tied to the body. So we feel our emotions in our body. And the emotions that we don't actually experience consciously because they're either repressed uh, subconsciously based on the programs that we developed when we were younger um, or we're consciously pushing them away saying I don't want to deal with that now I don't have time to deal with it so I'm just gonna put it out of my mind right and we've heard those things as well so lost my train of thought I don't do that often here so if the body is the subconscious mind and we feel our emotions in our body unresolved emotions the ones that we don't feel and are aware of consciously um, can kind of get stuck in the body so if think of it this way um, physical pain is just these unresolved emotional pains and you're feeling them in the body right so it's simple if you don't feel your emotions emotionally in your conscious brain once you get a lot of them stored up in your body you're going to feel the physical pain and that's just a manifestation of the emotional pain that you don't want to feel or your brain thinks you shouldn't feel so that makes it quite simple to understand and say look if, if the physical pain i'm feeling is really just the emotional pain being felt in the body my job is to essentially pull these emotions out of the body and feel them bring them to consciousness make yourself aware of them allow yourself to feel them and um, you know Sarno definitely said this is a distraction process I tend to agree with him there's there's different takes on it some people say it's just a real physical reaction to the chronic state of fight or flight and physiology wise there's no motive here to distract you but it's just the reaction of the body or the, the nervous system and the limbic system from all this chronic adrenaline and cortisol flooding through your body from a chronic state of fight or flight. Look, whether it's a reaction or a distraction really doesn't matter because again, the benefit here is that by teaching yourself that you are safe, your body is fine, and we can turn down the volume on the fear level and then shift our focus to these emotions that we believe the brain is distracting us from or that are just stored in our bodies um, pull these emotions up and out and you can eliminate the symptoms right because if you're no longer storing these negative emotions in the body then the body doesn't doesn't need to hurt and so I just view it as a nice simple way of of looking at this whole TMS thing which I joke is too much stress and it's very true so view your physical pain as emotions that are being felt in the body right 
And again, if you say, well, that's how does that work? Again, I'm all choked up. I've got a heavy heart. Felt like a kick in the gut. Right? You make me sick. I'm so angry my head could explode. Right? These are all phrases that we use to explain how emotions are felt in the body. Right? And so that's just the reality. Our body is where we feel emotions. If you go, well, I think I'm mad, you're not feeling it. Right? You're thinking your way through this. And this is not a thinking process. This is a feeling process. Yes, there is thinking involved. Yes, there is learning involved. Um, but it's not a thinking process. Don't think I should be mad because somebody said that. Yeah, yeah, I should really be mad. No, be mad. Urgh. Get pissed off. It's okay. You're allowed. Most of the time, these judgments or these, uh, these emotions are justified. So, I don't know what you guys think about this. Um, emotions are just felt in the body and that's why it hurts. Because we're not allowing ourselves to hurt emotionally for a lot of reasons. The brain has decided years ago when you were a kid that these certain emotions aren't okay. Susie, don't get mad at your brother. You're not allowed to get mad at your brother. Be nice to him, even though she was mad. So she's told that anger doesn't fit. Or, you know, if you're sad, you're told to be strong. You know, don't be a big baby. Don't be a wimp. Don't be a wussy, right? Be strong. And so, you know, sadness doesn't work or isn't allowed. We've got these programs running for a lot of our lifetimes. And so... You know, automatically, a lot of these emotions just get shoved into the subconscious. Um, so your job is to pull these emotions out of your body and into your consciousness, into your awareness. Give yourself, give yourself permission to feel them. And when you're done, this is really important, soothe yourself, however that is. Do something you enjoy. Do something that makes you smile or laugh. Just do deep breathing if you want. Go outside, enjoy some nature, take a walk, take a bath, take a shower, whatever it is to soothe yourself because sometimes feeling these emotions can kind of tighten us up and amplify the nervous system a little bit and get us into fight or flight. Um, I don't like TMS processes or practices that get us into story mode. I've talked about that a number of times. Story mode is getting into the details, the gritty details, like watching a movie of that past experience that caused this electrical charge. Um, I don't like replaying stories. I like just honoring the feelings. Come on, anger. Come on in. Got an open house here. Let me just sit with you, anger. We're gonna we're gonna feel each other. I'm gonna feel the anger. Really get pissed off. Get really feel it. When the anger's been felt, it'll let itself out. It'll release automatically. You don't have to do anything proactive to release it. So again, uh, physical pain, chronic physical pain, is just our negative emotions that we have not allowed ourselves to feel being stored and felt in the body. I hope that simplifies it for a lot of you guys and gals. Um, it's really important to realize that this stuff is not dangerous. It's not terminal. It's just, you know, that emotional charge, that electrical charge called emotions has to go somewhere. And if you don't allow yourself to feel it, it unloads into your body and can create pain or other symptoms, a myriad of other symptoms, gastrointestinal, nervous system, you know, twitches, uh, electrical bolt, bolts, uh, you name it, muscle weakness, anything. So, does this help you understand or allow you to kind of visualize the emotions are just stored and being felt in the body? Does that make sense? You know, because it's a concept that I'm really kind of newly developing here. And I'm taking what Dr. Joe Dispenza has said, which is that the body is actually our subconscious mind, and combining that with our knowledge that Sarno had that, you know, the pain is caused by these subconscious emotions which are stored in the body. 
So again, to, to really simplify things, your job is to, number one, become more aware that you're shoving your emotions into your body and to stop doing that. How do we do that? We reframe what we believe about ourselves if we feel emotions. You're not broken if you get angry. You're not weak if you feel sad. You're human, right? And so by reframing what we feel about ourselves, we can really slow down the tide of repression. We can start to uh, rewrite the scripts of our subconscious, the scripts that tell us these emotions are bad, let's lock them up. And so that'll stop you from unloading all of these negative emotions into your body. And then a daily TMS or you know, uh, mind-body practice that allows you to feel your emotions is great. Um, I've had a number of conversations recently that I don't see a lot of value in rehashing the traumas of our childhood. You know, I saw somebody post that they were working with their TMS therapist and by the time they got done with their TMS therapist, they had taken a childhood that was kind of viewed as normal and not awful. And after going through the childhood and having the TMS therapist reframe, well, that experience sounds really bad and that looks like abandonment, and literally reframed this person to the point where they came away from therapy feeling that their childhood was horrible, when in fact, their reality was that it wasn't so bad. And now they had a therapist convince them that their childhood was horrific and awful, and here's why you've got all these problems. And I get it, the therapist is just trying to help, but look, re-traumatizing yourself by revisiting your past negative emotional experience over and over and over again, I don't think it helps. If you do it, do it one more time, Go get the lesson from that experience. And what I'll probably do is um, I'll shoot a video next about finding the lesson from our past experiences. Um, better yet, I'll just talk about it now. We're only at 12 minutes. When I say go get the lesson from the past you know, negative emotional experience or past emotional trauma or even past physical trauma, um, the analogy I'll give is you're playing ball as a kid the ball bounces into the street and you just chase after it. You don't stop to think, you don't stop to look, you just run out after it. You hear the tires screeching, you hear the car horn honking, and when you look up, you're face to face with the grill of a, of a pickup truck. You almost died, right? Scary, right? Very frightening. And then your mom comes out running, screaming at you, what are you doing? Don't be stupid, you're gonna get yourself killed, right? Very emotional. So, what's the lesson? The lesson is, don't play in traffic. The lesson is not that trucks and cars are dangerous and you need to be petrified of them anytime you see one anywhere in your view, right? What's gonna keep you safe? Is it a fear of cars and trucks in any aspect of how you encounter them? I mean, if, if you truly decide that cars and trucks are the danger, then you won't be able to walk through a parking lot even if all the cars are parked and stopped and turned off and there's nobody in them. That doesn't keep you safe. The safety is learning the lesson that, hey, I'm not supposed to play in traffic. I'm not supposed to chase a ball out into the street. That lesson will keep you safe much more so than this conclusion that you may come to that says trucks are, trucks are dangerous. So the good news is the emotional charge of that experience is not needed anymore to keep you safe. The emotional charge can be let go because you've got the lesson. The lesson is don't play in traffic. No big deal. Thankfully, you were okay. So if you have an emotional experience like, you know, really, really tough times as a kid, whether it be bullying or parents that were less than ideal, I'll just say that to be kind to some of our parents. And um, what's the lesson? The lesson is not that what you may have decided as a kid, the lesson is not that you're a bad kid, that you're a bad person, that you deserve to be yelled at, that you're worthless, that you're stupid, or whatever else they called you. The lesson is, unfortunately, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. You grew up with parents that didn't know how to parent very well. You grew up with parents that were probably parented a lot like they parented you. 
And I'm not saying this to let them off the hook. You know, their behavior and the way they raised you is likely unacceptable, but they probably did the best they could given the tools that they had at their disposal. So what's a lesson for us about our childhood traumas or even recent emotional traumas? There's always a lesson there. And when you get the lesson, you can let the emotional charge go. You really can because you're wise. You've learned the lesson. You know, let's say you've had a, a boyfriend or girlfriend that you broke up with, you know, and you're left with this emotional charge. You're either really upset or really angry or whatever it may be. You know, it's a lot easier to let go of the emotional charge when you look back and say, what's the lesson? What can I learn from this? Well, the lesson may be that this boyfriend, girlfriend uh, exhibited a number of red flags that I should have pay paid attention to and I chose to ignore. And the lesson is that kind of came back and bit me in the rear end. So the lesson is I'm not going to make that mistake again. Excuse me. And... Um, you know, when you find a lesson, it's really easy to let go of the emotional charge. So, back to the original topic. Emotions are stored in and felt in the body. Normally, you know, let's say you find out your partner's been cheating on you. Oh, it's like a kick in the gut. Oh, you get so angry your head's going to explode. You get high headaches. You get stomach like you're going to throw up. Right? You make me sick. Oh. So these emotions are felt in the body. And if you don't allow yourself to feel them consciously and, and be aware of them, if you just quickly lock them up, they're eventually going to manifest as physical pain or physical symptoms in the body. So your job is to, again, learn how to feel these emotions in real time so you stop unloading them into the body. And then institute a daily practice where you can say, what am I feeling? Right now, what am I feeling? And over time, with practice and a lot of repetition, it's like you're ladling out a little bit of these emotions out of the subconscious of our bodies. You're getting them out. You're feeling them and you're letting them release. And, yeah, if you can, pick up the lesson from that experience. And so that's how we get better. We teach the brain that these emotions are not dangerous so they don't repress them automatically so you don't repress them automatically you feel the heck out of them and look here's a tip when you start to feel better which you will for sure don't stop the daily practice you gotta keep on doing it because what we need to do is make this a habit a habit of thought a habit of being a certain way a habit of feeling your emotions without fear. Know that you're not a damaged, broken, mentally ill person just because you've got emotions. It means you're a normal human being. So, what do you guys think about this? Let me know. Does it make sense that our emotions are stored and felt in our body and our job is to remove them from our physical body? Right? Let's pull these emotions out of the physical body into the conscious mind where we can feel them, be aware of them, sit with them as long as you need to sit with them. Allow them to release automatically. They'll let themselves out of the open house when they're done. And then, you know, realistically, that, that's the equation. Soothe yourself afterwards so you tell your brain clearly, hey, I just felt some really scary, intense emotions that you thought were dangerous, but look at me. I'm still smiling. I'm good. I'm sitting outside. I'm loving the outdoors. And, uh, you know, keep on doing that. Remind yourself you're safe. Remind yourself your body's okay. Become aware of your conscious thoughts. Are you catastrophizing? Are you saying, oh no, what if this lasts forever? If you ever start with that, what if? Hit the brakes. What if your fears are incorrect? What if everything you're learning is helping you get out of pain? What if you don't have a long time of pain left? What if you are going to be well really soon? Aren't those what-ifs a lot better than the what-ifs that you're probably practicing, which is, what if, I, what if I end up in a wheelchair? What if I can't get out of the house? What if I don't work? What if I can't do this? What if I can't do that? Oh my God, oh my God. Catastrophizing. I never met anybody that catastrophizing ever helped. So, all right, guys, gals. 
Let me know what you think. Did this concept of our body being the subconscious mind and the physical pain is just us feeling our negative repressed emotions in our body as pain and the need to pull those emotions out of the body into the consciousness and feel them as a way to get out of this mess. So let me know what you think. Did it resonate with you? So we'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks.